What's up guys, welcome to a new video and welcome to a new Ask Jenna. Now I figured I would just make this a tech edition because it is tech season and I feel like that was gonna be most of my questions anyway. So we're just gonna be talking tech. It's so crazy how many announcements there have been and how many new products are out. It's overwhelming, but it's keeping me busy and I can't complain. So let's get to the first question. I asked you guys on Twitter as well as Instagram. We've got a lot of questions. The first question is, what will be your go-to camera for the rest of 2020? That would be, of course, the Sony a7S III. I can't believe that it's actually here and it's mine. I wanted to actually record this video with it, but then I also wanted to like look at it and show you guys it because I just feel just feel proud and excited. And I can't wait to go shoot some, some more 120 4K of I'm not sure what, because I don't really leave my house. But considering this is tech season and I'm gonna have this to film a lot of my videos, excited. Also, I just wanted to say thank you so much to iVanky for sponsoring this video. We couldn't have had a more perfect sponsor for what we're about to talk about today. Will you finally buy an iPad this year because of the new iPad Air? It's actually been a very long time since I've purchased an iPad. The last time I purchased an iPad was because I needed it to fly a drone. I'm not even sure when that was, but it was a really long time ago. I just would always use my sisters if I needed it, and I'm always using my Surface, and I don't know, I just never, I have my phone, and I just never felt like I needed it. But when Apple just recently announced the iPad Air with the five colors in the Touch ID, I was like, this is very, very nice. I'm reconsidering. I don't need it, but I want it. What is your favorite smart home devices that are compatible with Apple HomeKit? I have the Philips Hue bulbs in a lot of my devices. And another thing I use a lot is one of the uh, Schlage door uh, keypads. It's really great because I can unlock my door from my phone so I don't need to take my keys. And also obviously I can use the keypad. So I feel like those are probably the two devices I use the most. If Apple makes a treadmill, will you buy it? Oh my God, probably. It would probably be very expensive though, because let's let's face it, their stuff is not cheap. What are your thoughts on the Fitness Plus? Could it replace your other workout apps? So right now I do have a Peloton bike. It's the original Peloton bike and I've been using the Peloton digital app just to do like a lot of at-home workouts. So that's been kind of my go-to, but I also just recently got a Tempo. So the Tempo is actually really neat because it's basically like this big mirror and in the mirror, yes, you can use it as a mirror, but you also have classes where you can watch the instructor and it will have a camera so it can tell you what you're doing correctly. So like the other day I was doing these overhead presses and it was like, you're leaning back. So then as I would correct, it would say, okay, you're leaning forward, you've corrected your form. So it's actually able to tell you if you're doing it correctly or not. So this has been something that I've been loving because I haven't been able to go to a gym. I'll probably get the premiere plan where it will be a part of you know what I pay monthly. So I'm definitely gonna check it out. Probably will use it, but I don't think it's gonna replace my other workout apps. What tech device do you rely on most that's not your phone? That would have to be my MacBook Pro, which is basically always connected to a hub. And it's perfect because this video is actually sponsored by Avanki, and this is something that I don't leave the house without. So this right here is the Avanki USB-C 7-in-1 hub. This is the multifunctional hub. This includes a 100-watt laptop charging USB-C port, a one 4K at 30 hertz HDMI video port, one SD card slot reader, one TF micro SD card slot reader, and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 type A ports. It also has an RJ45 gig ethernet port. And honestly, this has been the perfect all-in-one solution for all of my needs. I would say I use it the most for the SD slot as well as the micro SD. So this has been a really great all-in-one device. Also, when you purchase this product off of Amazon, you have a 54 month warranty. There's gonna be a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out as well as a discount code. One of my favorite little devices, relatively inexpensive for what you're getting and I highly, highly recommend it. Are you going to use a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X as your main console, ask Jenna. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we have the Xbox Series X as well as the Xbox Series S coming out November 10th. I love all consoles. I'm now also into PC gaming. I definitely lean a little bit more Xbox only because the majority of my friends are on Xbox and I love playing with them. I'm probably gonna have the Xbox Series X as well as the digital version of the PlayStation. PlayStation also just recently announced their pricing. So for the PlayStation 5, looks like it's $499.99 and for the digital version it is $399.99. Which version band color of the Apple Watch did you order? Well that's funny that you ask because I accidentally ordered two. 
I panicked and the app wasn't really working. So then I got on the website and the website wasn't really working. So then I checked out, but when I checked out, it said it wasn't connected to an Apple ID account. So then I was like, maybe it didn't go through. So then I bought another one, but I ended up going with the 40 millimeter, the graphite stainless steel. I also got the blue braided loop band. I also then checked my order and I had two watches showing up and I can't cancel the one. I don't just, I don't want to talk about it. Favorite mobile device of 2020 so far. I'm going to have to pick the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and the Surface Duo. I just really like them and they're so completely different even though they both, you know, have like the flip and they're the same thing, but like they're not the same thing. Those are my two favorite devices of 2020. I had to give back the Z Fold the other day and a part of me died. I was like, I don't want to give it back, but I did. Did I miss it? I'm also loving the Duo, especially now that their uh, cloud gaming has officially launched. It's here. It's just fun. What is a good starting streaming setup? That's a great question. Honestly, I feel like whatever you have, you can probably make work. If you have a laptop and you want to stream from a laptop, you can make it work. Now I have the HD 60 S plus, which I use to capture gameplay from my Xbox or from my PC or from my PlayStation. So I have that go into my PC. But for a while there, I was just using my MacBook, which is kind of tough on a MacBook <laughs> to, to stream. Definitely easier on a PC. If you have a webcam, you can stream from a webcam if you wanna do a face cam. Another cool thing that Sony announced recently is that you can use most of their cameras as a streaming device without any added equipment. So if you download the Sony Imaging Edge, there's instructions on how to do it, but you basically download that. You can then just connect with a cable to your PC and use that as a device. Maybe that's if you just want to upgrade your Zoom calls or your Teams calls, or maybe if you wanna use that as your face cam for streaming, you can do that. But honestly, I think that making work whatever you have, or if you do want to invest in you know, a setup, there's so many different ways that you can do it. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's overwhelming actually. Do you think there will be touch ID instead of the iPhone's power button now that the iPad has it? I really hope so. I think that they're a little behind on that. Um, yeah, face ID is great, but now that a lot of us are wearing masks and our faces are covered, it makes it a little bit more difficult. I love that a lot of the Samsung devices have it on the side as well as the Surface Duo, they have it right there. They just, they have the fingerprint. It unlocks your device. You're good to go. How do you keep up with all the tech, the filming, the posting? I drink a lot of caffeine, not gonna lie. How many Sony cameras do you have? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have a couple. Did you manage to get your second watch refunded? Nope. I'm gonna have two Apple Watches showing up, but I'm going to return one, hopefully. Is Apple Watch worth it? The Apple Watch is actually one of my favorite devices. I use mine every single day. I use it for fitness. I use it to check my ECG. I used to use it to walkie-talkie my friends. I'm a little upset that Apple did not come out with the ceramic, but I'm a little excited because I'm gonna be saving a lot of money. But the Apple Watch is one of my favorite devices. I go for a run, I have the cellular, I don't need to bring my phone. I also love hearing the stories of how the Apple Watch has saved people's lives. It's just, it's really Really remarkable that we have that technology on our wrist. I did fall going up the stairs one time and my Apple Watch was like, looks like you've taken a fall. And I was like, I did take a fall. And I mean, who knows? Like this could save my life one day and you never know. And I'm really excited about the blood oxygen levels and all the fitness things and all the stuff that you can do with the watch, the elevation for when I'm hiking. I just really like it. Favorite quarantine device? Probably my Xbox. I really think, ah, no, wait a minute. No, I definitely love my Xbox because it's kept me sane, it got me into streaming. Literally played Xbox and Call of Duty probably every night for like three or four months with my friends and it was just like something I looked forward to, but also my robot vacuum. So if I have to be stuck in the house all day, I want a clean house, but I don't want to clean it. So the robot vacuum just cleans for me. If you work security for Samsung, would you be a guardian of the galaxy? I guess. Any advice for a small creator? Honestly, I've been making content for 10 years and it's a lot. Even the past couple videos haven't been doing so well and sometimes I just feel so defeated, but just don't give up. Like you're gonna go through these waves of, you know, maybe you're doing well, maybe you're not doing well, you wanna give up, but just don't give up. If you're still enjoying it and you're having fun, don't give up and create what you want to create. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to other creators to like collab. I'm terrible at that because I don't ever want to ask people, be like, hey, do you want to collab? I just, I just, I feel like what if they say no? And I, I should be taking my own advice. I shouldn't be scared, but I am. But I would just say my biggest piece of advice is don't give up. How many spare cables do you have lying around? 
Well, that's a good one to end on. Don't tell anyone about this. This is just cables. And you know what? I have actually another basket of just cables. Not proud of it. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for all of your questions and thank you for all of the support. And I know this has been a very tech heavy time with the content, but I really appreciate you guys hanging in there and watching and all of your support. Special thank you to Ivanki for sponsoring this video as well. There's gonna be a link in the description. Don't forget if you want to check out the 7-in-1 hub. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again soon.